I want to thank uh, Brightbod.com for having me here to talk about lupus. My name is Julie Jo Kohler, and I'm a lupus patient. I'm not a doctor. For any medical advice, always see your physician. And uh, your mics are going to be muted during my presentation. They'll be unmuted afterwards for question and answers. And uh, you might want to keep a pen and paper with you in case you think of questions during the presentation that you can ask. And uh, if you think of anything after that, you can go to brightbod.com. You can record your question, and either me or someone else will answer you with a recorded answer. How cool is that? And uh, today, I'm going to talk about juggling your many specialists with lupus or really any systemic disease. So let's get started. Okay. There we go. Juggling your docs while you're sick. You know, with lupus, because it affects all your body systems, you can have anything go wrong from your kidneys to your skin to your brain to your heart. So you're going to have more than one doctor. It's just going to happen because you're going to need a specialist. Your rheumatologist is generally the doctor that takes care of lupus patients, but he doesn't have an expertise in skin and kidneys. So you will end up seeing a specialist, and it's really, really hard to keep track of your doctors, while, especially while you're sick especially while you're sick. It's hard enough to remember your regular appointments, but appointments with specialists and information that they need to get, it's a hard thing to do. So there is only really one way to do it, and that's to be prepared. And I say be prepared, not scared, because the only way to tackle it is to do as much as you can in advance so that you're ready. If something comes up and you have a serious complication, you need to be ready. And when you're sick, it's the hardest time to have to stand up for yourself. You're not feeling well. And uh, to be able to keep track of everything you need to, labs, doctors, medicines, it's really hard. So you need to be prepared in advance. I suggest making something uh, called a medical overview. Do you have one? Because you, you probably should, and you should carry it with you everywhere, and you should keep it updated. It can be really, really simple. I have a sample up here of what it would look like. You want to put your name. You want to put you know, your uh, diagnosis, what's wrong with you. And then you want to put your doctors and your medicines and their contact information on there so that if you are seeing one doctor and you need to see another one and you want them to talk to each other because you want your health care to be coordinated, you want your specialists to know what's going on with you. And sometimes when you're sick, you don't have a voice. Or you don't have a big voice. And this is your voice. Take it with you everywhere. If you end up in the ER, if you end up at an urgent care, you want them to know what's wrong with you. You want them to know what medicines you're on. You don't want interactions with your medications. You don't want two doctors giving you the same script. You want good advice. And the best way to get it is to Keep your doctors as informed as you can, because this becomes your voice. Uh, what about using a digital app? Do any of you use a digital app to keep track of your health care? I did a Google search, and I was shocked. There's tons, just for lupus. I found at least three dozen of them. Uh, and they're great for keeping track of your appointments. They're great for keeping track of... Uh, your, you know, what time they are. Uh, some of them keep track of your medications, and that's all good. But one thing that they don't do, you usually can't print out from them if you're in an emergency situation. 
you need something you can give your doctor. Uh, you don't want to give them your phone and have them sit there fiddle with your phone for an hour. So in case you have health care that isn't coordinated electronically, you want to be able to hand them something. So I say digital apps are very helpful, but also keep something with you. Uh, what paperwork should you keep uh, from your appointments and your many labs that you have with different doctors? Uh, my answer, keep everything. Keep it all. Keep your lab reports. Keep your test results. When you go in to take a test or you go to a specialist, you ask them right at the office, may I please have a copy of these results or a summary of my office visit sent to me? And you give them your address because you want a copy of this. Lots of times your doctors will get a copy and you'll have to go to your doctor and follow up on what your results are. And that's fine and it works most of the time, except if you're dealing with multiple doctors. With multiple doctors, they're not always gonna have a copy of where you were right in front of you. So always ask and you'll find that they don't have instructions to send a copy of the results to you. You give them your address and you make sure that you're on that list to get a copy of those results. And you make sure, you know, a good way to keep track of your medications, if you get them all in one place, you can print a summary. Walgreens does summaries. Um, I know CVS does summaries. And that way, if it's hard for you to write down all the medications, because most times they're being uh, prescribed by different doctors. With specialists, it can get really tricky because the specialists are prescribing medications for different conditions. And who's going to be there to make sure that, you know, there's no interactions, that, you know, the other one knows what's being prescribed. So printing out a summary is a really good idea. And like I said, keeping uh, a copy of what medicines, what specialist is giving you is a really good idea and keeping it with you. You might have a team of doctors, but are they working as a team? Really important question because you may have a nephrologist and a neurologist and a dermatologist, a rheumatologist and a general practitioner, and they all might be really good at what they're doing. But are they working together? Are they working for you? And that's really important because you want the best out of whatever healthcare you have. And the only way to get that is, who's the doctor in charge? And uh, that means assigning one of your doctors to be the one in charge. Regardless of what your insurance, if you have insurance, or, or, you know, your doctors tell you, you need to pick one. Pick one doctor, one specialist, or your general practitioner to be the doctor in charge. And this doctor has to work closely with you to give you the best care that you can get and keep everything straight, meaning your conditions what you're diagnosed with by your specialist, what they're treating you for, what medications they're putting you on, which is why you should bring that medical overview with you to every appointment with every specialist. This will help them coordinate your care. What can you do to help them coordinate your care? Bring the medical overview in. Always keep it updated with the newest prescriptions that you take. With doctor's notes, if you can get a hold of those when you see your specialist, of your lab results, and attach them, give them to the office girl when you go in for your appointments, have them make a copy, and then you can go ahead and put everyone on the same page. And that way, your general practitioner, 
let's say you pick him instead of, instead of another doctor, he's the one that's you've decided is going to help coordinate. You can go to your appointment early. You can ask to you can make an appointment with all your specialists. Give them the paperwork. Tell them how you're going to help. Bring it in the paperwork and say, let's go over this every time that I come in, so you know what's going on with me. When a situation comes up, the doctor that you choose to be in charge is the one you're going to ask to call the other specialists. This is what's going to give you a cohesive uh, health care. This is what's going to make it easier for your doctors to work together. What can you do at home for the sick days in case these days come up? And they happen, and they happen fast. With diseases like lupus, you can be fine one minute, and 20 minutes later, boom, you've got a rash, you've got pain, you've got muscle and joint pain, your kidneys, uh, anything. So you have to be ready. So you want to call family and friends, always, always it, call them, see if they can help. Have things like movies available for you or your family during times that you're down. Things like Epsom salts for baths. Just be ready. What else can you do? You can prepare meals in advance. You can uh, keep your medications organized so that if you're not there, your significant other or your family and friends who come to help you can find your medications easily. Um, that happens to be my picture of uh, my meds, the way that I keep them. And because there are so many, I take 22 different medications a day. This is how I keep them straight. It's always good to have things close by where you can get them. And uh, a living will is a good idea. Um, you want to have that in case something comes up with any chronic disease that can be serious, you should be prepared. And last of all, why is it so important to organize your health care? What's more important than peace of mind? Uh, nothing, <laughs> especially when you're sick. And no one is going to take care of it like you are. You, the patient, are your own best advocate. Speak up, keep your information close to you, take it with you everywhere you go. It's important because potential drug interactions with the medicines that you have, your doctors should all be aware, an ER should be aware, and urgent care before they prescribe you anything of what you're already taking. When you're sick, you may not remember. I know I don't. I don't, and I have to pull out my paper. It's my voice. And all of it works together to give you the best health care that you can get and to get your specialists all on the same page. I'm going to go ahead and uh, open for questions. Let's see if it lets... Julie. Yeah. You said um, to take it with you everywhere. You're, are you saying that you should take it on a daily basis with you, like part of your what's in your pocketbook, or is this just maybe when you're going for a visit to a doctor? Everywhere. Take everywhere. it everywhere. At yeah, at least have your doctors, your specialists, their name, their contact information, and the medications that you're on with mm. you at all times. It may only end up being one sheet, two sheets, two sheets of paper, but fold it up, keep it with you. Yeah, yeah. because uh, um, um, the tips are great. I have to commend you on the tips for as far as the preparation, because I think that not only is it applied, could be applied to somebody that has a, an illness, but I think it's a good thing to have in general that everybody should have. You know, everybody's is going to be different. Yours might be two pages. Mine might just be, you know, two lines. But it's it's a good idea to have that with you because you you just never know what could happen. And you know, to have that at your fingertips, it's it's a great idea. Thank you. Thank you. 
Yeah, it is. And, you know, even with digital records these days, um, not all your specialists are going to be digitized. I know places like Banner and Mayo, they have uh, comprehensive digital records that they keep on you so they can always look it up. But you have to go there for that. If you have a doctor that's not in their system, that's already outside. So that's why you have to make sure that you have that contact information and your meds that you're taking with you. Yeah. I have a question. Okay. Um, do any of your doctors, do you have access to your medical records online that you could log in and retrieve your own medical records? I know some of my doctors, I'm able to do that. Yes. Yeah, so, yes. Yeah, some of them. Um, lab results. You, I don't know about, you know, everyone, but I know that I can get lab core and, uh, uh, the other one, um, Simon med, you can get those online. You have to sign up. You have to create an account and all that, and they verify who you are. But, yeah, you can download your records from there. And anytime you go to an ER, usually, if it's a big ER, you can get those records online, too. So if you don't get them when you leave, you can get them afterwards at their site and download them. So don't be afraid to try and call them up and go online and see if there's a way to get them that way too. Okay, good. I have another question. Do, do all your doctors work well together? Um, you know, yes, yes. Because I have a doctor who I have put in charge and I see more often than I see the other ones, I rely on him to be my voice with my specialists because his voice, because he's a physician, is going to be heard before me. So if there is a problem, I always go to the doctor that I've designated as the one in charge and I say, you know, my uh, orthopedic surgeon suggests that I have another surgery on my back. And I say, what do you think? And he, he looks at it, he says, yeah, you know, if they think that that's what you need, that's probably what you need. And I said, well, you know what? Because you know everyone that I'm seeing, can you give him a call and, you know, I'll make a follow-up appointment with you and we'll see what's going on there. And that way, you've got them in. You've got, you're bringing them together, which is what you need to do. I mean, some doctors are busier than others, and I've had situations where it's taken longer than usual for the ball to start rolling with one or two, but they always come through. They do, because I think most physicians want to help you, especially when you're a complicated patient, and they know that they're one of many. And and they also don't want to give you a medicine that's going to interact with something else you're taking. Right. And that's really important. So for them to know what you're already taking, and it's a good thing that we'll appreciate it. I've had good luck. Okay, great. Thank you. Sure. So with all the medicines and doctors and um, like lab visits that you have to do, um, I'm sure it's a very expensive process. So is this a difficult thing to get insurance to cover you for? Yeah, and that's a, another good point. Another really good reason it, uh, to have a doctor that you put in charge because normally, uh, normally it's your general practitioner that will know what's covered on your insurance if you have insurance and what's not. For example, they'll send you to the right uh, you know, uh, lab, the one that's going to be covered, and they'll usually know your copay. If they don't, you can always call ahead. You can check it with insurance if you have it, what it's going to be. If you're paying cash, call ahead. See if you can uh, get a cash uh, um, discount because you're paying cash. But, yeah, it's, it's, hard. it's hard to keep track when you have so many. And it's very, it can be very, very expensive. But most of the time, it has to be done. I mean, you know, either that or you just have to do the best you can with what you're working with.
Uh, Julie, got a question. Um, actually, I have one question and then one kind of a not much of a question, but I'm going to ask that first. Um, on the medical overview, the DX, I assume that that stands for diagnosis? Yeah. Okay. All right. That wasn't my question, but I just wanted to clarify that. Um, now, you said you should, you, a good idea is to have labs send your, um, your results to you. Is that, is that a common, uh, common occurrence? I mean, uh, is that, uh, not occurrence, but is that like, a, um, is that do something that they really do? It, do patients do that often? Is that what? Yeah. Uh, they should. I mean, do, do should. They, Question is, do the labs do you have, any, have any pushback? I mean, is, is, is it like your right to get that from them or? Uh, I'm not sure. Le I believe legally you're entitled to your results and your on your labs. Okay. I, I think so. And I mean, I've never had a problem. I always ask, make sure you're sending me a copy of that too. I've, I've never had any pushback on that ever. So um, I know HIPAA. As long as some of them, you may have to sign something yeah. uh, that, you know, says I am who I am and I can have a copy of my labs. But, you know, I can, I'm not sure legally, yeah. but like I said, I've never had an issue getting them. Yeah, I, I just wondered about that because, like, I get a physical every year and, and then, then I go to, like, Quest Diagnostics to get my blood test, whatever. Then I got to go back to the doctor and have them explain to me what the lab, you know, what was on. And I'm thought. It'd be kind of cool if I could just have it sent to me, a copy of it sent to me. Right. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, when I only had one or two doctors before I got sick, I was like that too. But once I got sick and I started having appointment after appointment with different doctors, I couldn't wait. I mean, I would, you know, I would have a two weeks until a follow up with one doctor, but I needed the other doctor to see it because I was going to have surgery. And I'm like, well, I have to have a copy of that. So, uh, and also for, you know, maybe you're on disability and maybe for every good reason in the world, you want to have a copy of your labs always. I know that they've come in handy for me. I've had doctors who say, well, you know what, we're going to have to wait until this comes back until we can see you and get the ball rolling on that surgery. And if I can say, Oh, I got it right here. <laughs> yeah. You know, you can get things done a lot faster. Yeah. And, and one quick comment um, on the, the, the apps, the phone apps is kind of a cool thing. Unless you're, Unless you got your phone password protected and you may not always be in a position to unlock it if they need the information. Yes. From it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And you may have, you may have information on there that that's fine and dandy, but then you got to hand your phone over to someone. <laughs> you're you're going to say here, doc, take yeah. my phone with you. Go ahead and read it. And right. you know how hard it is to print off an app on your phone. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Somewhere, you know, it's hard enough to do at home to print off an app, let alone do it. Yeah. somewhere you're not familiar with like a doctor's office so yeah that's why i always say bring the paper right. actual paper yeah thanks <laughs> sure any other questions yeah i have a couple of questions um how do you know which doctor is going to be the best person to be the leader of your medical team um i don't mean which one is the smartest or, you know, has the best reputation, but who, how do I figure out who is going to be the best doctor for me and for helping me get the best health care? Go ahead. Uh, I would say normally it's going to be your general practitioner because he's the one that, or she's the one that you see the most. They're the one that usually coordinate your labs. They're the one that do the referrals usually to your specialists. Um, they're going to end up being the one you want to pick because they're already familiar with that. But, uh, or you could be diagnosed with a neurological issue or, uh, and you want your neurologist to be in charge because you have a condition that's predominant and you want the doctor who's treating the big condition to be the one in charge. So those those things might influence who you decide to choose. 
what if my primary physician or the uh, my team leader is not doing a good job of communicating with the other doctors? Number one, how could I figure that out? Um, and number two, if that should be the case, how can I fix the situation? Is it a matter of just identifying and picking a different doctor to be the team leader? That's a really good question. Um, if they're not, if you're waiting for information, if you're waiting for an appointment, if you don't have an answer back and you go see your doctor and they're like, well, um, you know, I haven't heard from your surgeon yet, I'm not sure. You kind of feel like they're dropping the ball and you want to choose someone else. I would say fire them. <laughs> as as your as your lead doctor, I sit down, talk to them first. I say, always give them a chance. Tell them what you really need them for. Tell them how important it is to you and how important they are to you. And hopefully, you can work it out. If not, and you don't feel that they're going to be a good job, I would fire them and choose another. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions for now? Yeah, I'll ask another question. Um, so if I, if I am concerned about uh, the, the type of service I'm getting from my physician, um, but I live in a small town, I, I might be concerned that there aren't going to be enough good physicians in my area. What would you tell somebody who's in a similar situation? Manage your own health care. No one's going to do it like you. Do it yourself. Keep the records. Keep the labs. Keep, keep uh, all the information. Keep the medicines you're on. And when you go to another doctor or you go for surgery, keep everything with you. You make the phone calls. You coordinate the health care. I don't know that you you don't you don't have another choice, and nobody does it like you. Even even your you know husband or your wife who loves you dearly, they don't know your condition like you know it. They don't know your health care like you know it. You keep the paper with you. You keep track of everything, and then you're your own best advocate. Thank you. Do you think that? Um you know, because a whole team of doctors are required for me to get, um, you know, the, the treatment that I need. Um, do you think there's a lot of uh, finger pointing among the physicians? And I mean, isn't it difficult to figure out who messed up? Uh, because n none of them are going to want to accept responsibility. And so how do you figure out who's the problem in that network of doctors? Uh, that's a good question. I would say when, when you have an appointment or you have a surgery or a lab scheduled and there's an issue, then the doctor who ordered it is probably the issue. Maybe they gave you the wrong lab. Maybe they thought your copay was going to be less than it was and you get there and they want, you know, $6,000 for it. And you're like, well, wait a minute. That doesn't sound right. So you kind of got to, as, as, as far as health issues go with that and pointing fingers, the specialists, I really haven't had too many problems with that. Um, that's probably why I keep a paper with all the medications that I'm taking. So there isn't going to be any finger pointing at who messed up, who gave me the script that they weren't supposed to give me. But again, you got to be in charge. You got to take over. Any other questions I can I can help anyone with? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and end it for today. Thank you all for coming, and I hope to see you next time. Thank you. Good night.